It is now time for our last final of this 2023 WDF World Cup here in Esbjerg. It is the men's team final between the Netherlands and England. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome first to the stage Jelle Klaassen, Berry van Peer, Ryan de Vrede and Wesley Pleisier. Team Netherlands! And ladies and gentlemen, their opponents, please welcome Scott Mitchell, James Hurrell, Jamie Atkins, Reese Colley, Team England! We are now Our ready for the last England, final Atkins of this WDF World Pleasure. Cup in Denmark. This is, of course, the final in the men's team competition. The finalists are Holland and England. A final that I have very much been looking forward to and by my side I have a good colleague who I know for a fact has been looking forward to this as well. Marco Meyer, very welcome and it's great to have you here. I know you are a dartsling expert, also a referee and you are a Dutchman yourself. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So, yeah, this is definitely the final we've been looking for. We just saw a great team event in the ladies, but now we're going to concentrate on this one. Yeah, the two biggest rivals, I think. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. I think we all are. It's, of course, the main competition at the World Cup, since it's also the competition that gives the most points to the overall rankings but we can talk a bit further into that in a few moments time the final is underway and Jamie Atkins fires off a 180 in yeah. the very first visit so that's a good start so hopefully we're gonna have some great standard this final in the beginning it will be fine, but at the bit of the end of the match there will be a lot of nerves going on, I think, so... Let's see in the first couple of legs who can take the little lead. On paper the Dutch are the favourites, but this is completely different. So it's a team event, so you never know. Also a very strong English teams who... To be fair, in the men's competition, perhaps haven't had the results that they would have hoped for. But of course, everything can change if they take the gold medal here. Yeah, nothing to worry here for Atkins. He has plenty of time to get the first leg on the board. Good leg of darts on 86 after 12. Very much so. Now treble 18 for double 16. That leaves 74. So now 20 to leave 40. Yeah, good up, good setup shot here by Atkins. The only thing Plagier can do is put some pressure on. Going downstairs. Yeah, that's not enough for the big Dutchman. Atkins for tops on the first leg. And that is the first leg, so the first leg of this team event goes to England. And Marco, let's just talk a bit about the format of this final, because as you can see on the screens, it's first to nine sets. So, yeah, every team will have one player up on the stage at a time. And every single leg is regarded as a set. So the first team that reaches nine sets will be crowned the champions but please explain to us how does the teams pick what 
which players are coming up on stage? Um, well, if you play at home, so um, it's a different order. So player one was Atkins, n number two was Hurrell. So we have to wait and see what number three is. But it's all different order every time they play. So you have a group of four in the first leg, then a group of four from legs five to eight, and then continue, continue. And if the score reach eight all, that means that they all four played each other once, then we're going to have a 17th leg shootout, and then the captain can decide who's going to play the deciding leg. Yeah, they met at the Europe Cup a year ago in Spain, and it went 9-8, so can you imagine in a venue full of people, with so many people, if we have that as well. So stay with us for the next 45 minutes, an hour, <laughs> and you're going to see a lot of tension on the stage. We almost saw it happen at in the previous final when Ireland beat Wales 9-7. to seven. A very close contest and also a very well-played oh. final. Yeah, it was good. Deserved winners from Ireland. Yeah, good lag here from the Raiders so far. The plan is to win your own legs and see if there are any possibilities in the leg from your opponent. What we saw happening in the first leg, Wesley didn't have a shot at a double, and it looks like if the Raider plays like this, Hurl is not on a double as well. So basically, you need to win your first leg or the legs you start. That's the most important. 84 left. For the Vrede. Yeah, unlucky with that trouble five. But even with a 180, Hurl will not even leave a finish. So plenty of time for the Vrede. That leaves double six. And equalize 1-1 one, one. and let's just hope that this continues because I want that last leg decider yeah I think everybody in the venue wants a last leg decider except from the Dutch players and the managers and the England players and the managers but we'll see now is an action we saw him earlier on stage today he's the World Cup singles champion Betty van Peer and what a championship he has so far. What a World Cup he had. And he can walk away tonight with three goals. He definitely has two already in the singles. And even if they lose this final, they will be overall champions as well. But it would be nice if you debut in your World Cup, in the Dutch team for a World Cup, and you get home with three goals. But still eight legs to go. <laughs> for one of the teams. England to throw first, so here we go. Rhys Colley on the board. And earlier on on the stream, I said that Barry Van Peer was the fourth Dutch singles champion in the World Cup history. That, of course, is wrong. Uh, yeah, it's the fifth. The fifth. Yes, it is. So, Marco, I expect you to remember the previous four players. Yes, I know. It was in 93. It was Roland Scholten. Then we had three times Raymond van Barneveld. Then in 2005, I believe, it was Dick van Dijk. He won in Australia. Ten years later in Turkey, Wesley Harms won it. And now eight years later in 2023... Here's the man, Barry van Peer. And I can't say I remember the finals, but I remember who they beat in 93 and 2005, because that was two Danish players, Troel Sussel in 1993, and of course, Per Larsen in 2005. But this is the reigning 
World Cup singles champion, Barry van Peer. Oh, unlucky with the last dart. I was just going to say, that's what you want to do. Put your opponent on, the, on pressure. Leave a double after 12. So now it's an okay lag for Colley, but here's Van Peer. It's the first chance for a break. He chooses tops this time. Double 10. He just missed. It was the first two darts for the break. Now Reese Colley to have a chance to win his own leg. Yeah, two darts for tops. Great first dart. Yeah, you see Barry Lucan. Yeah, great finish here by Colley to get the lead for England. Yeah, he showed a bit of disappointment on his face from Barry. That was a chance to get an early lead. And now we're going to have a battle from former world champions. 2006 world champion Jelle Klaassen and the 2015 world champion Scott Mitchell. And I believe Klaassen is still the youngest ever world champion in the men's he competition. Is. I believe he was just 21 years old. Yes, he was. Maybe he's not going to like it, but he doesn't hear me now. But it's more than 17 years ago. <laughs> but a player who has been up and down in his career, but I think in, in the last few years he has begun to show some really good signs again. Yeah, definitely. Been successful on the WDF tour. Yeah, definitely. Of course, in the years before that, he played really good on the PDC. He made it. He even made it to the semi-final of the world. Then a couple of years later, he lost his steel card, and now he's back in the WDF system. He had some great wins at the Dutch Open in 2022. Now here we go, lag number four. And if you don't start with a treble, you can say that it's a bit of a disappointment. Yes, it is. But no troubles for Mitchell either. Two players with an incredible amount of experience, not only from the biggest stages around the world, but also from the Euro Cups and World Cups and also from these team competitions. Yeah, only one treble for Klaassen, the first nine darts. Yeah, Mitchell is counting here. He starts in the 18s. Good decision. He hits another treble. He leaves a finish. Yeah, great darts here from Klaassen. After a bit of a disappointing start in this lag, brilliant 180. And he really needed a big score as well. Oh, trouble five here for Mitchell. Yeah, he's going down. Yeah, good last dart for Mitchell. Glasser for 107. 88 left. No, no trouble. 16. Yeah, good darts here from Yala, but he has to wait. What Mitchell is going to do with 112. He will have a dart for a double, you should say. He goes for tops. Oh, he pulls that dart. He yeah. knew he didn't throw it good. No. Klaassen, back for 24. 
Double six. Oh, he just missed. He didn't expect to come back, Scott Mitchell here. But he uses the opportunity, and it's now 3-1 for England. Yeah, and it's the first break as well. And now that every player has been on stage, they only have three practice starts before Nick Rolls says game on. There really is a big, big difference between playing normal single format games or even in the pairs tournament to play the team's competition since there's no, I mean, you, you simply, you just can't find any rhythm. You need to rely on, well, on your f action and you need to be so focused even when you can practice before the match. Yeah, exactly. And you have to handle with the nerves. Of course, they, the players who are now off stage, they can have a practice in between the legs. But when you go on stage, you only have three darts and then it's game on. Good start here for Plaisir. He wants the break back, of course, for the Netherlands. Not a good start from her earlier. After the first four legs, James Hurl is the only Englishman who hasn't won a leg. That's a great dart for Wesley. When he puts it in the top of the treble, you expect him to follow with at least one more. Hurl should go down here. Start on the 19s. Yeah, good last dart from Hurl. Still the advantage for Bajir, I say, in this leg. And this will definitely help. Oh, unlucky with the last one. But he definitely has the first chance to have to break back. He seems to be taking his time, James. Both walking up and off the dartboard. That's a great visit. Great score here from Harold. Plays here for 115. Does he have a dot of the double? Yes, he has one for tops. Oh, unlucky for Plays here. Now it's back to England with Harold. Will he have one or two dots for the double? Plenty of options here. Goes for the treble 10. But that doesn't happen. And also Hurl has one dart for tops. And he missed as well. Now it's time for Plaisir. To get the second leg on the board for the Netherlands. And that's a great dart. 16 darts. Plaisir say thank you very much after that missed double from Hurl. And it's 3 2.
So now it's Barry Van Peer and Jamie Atkins. And just looking down the average list of the team's competition, Barry Van Peer is actually the player with the second highest overall average throughout the whole team's competition. An overall average of 87, which is a bit lower than his overall singles average but that is very much what you can expect it is very often hard to find your a game in these teams competitions and jamie atkins is a player who i think most people wouldn't have heard too much about before however early in the year i spoke to jamie caven who on the other hand a lot of people probably know and he said that jamie atkins has been really good in the domestic tournaments back home in england and for him it was no surprise to see jamie atkins in this england side and he has been really good on stage tonight so far Obviously, won the first leg in 16 darts and started off really well in this one against Barry Van Peer. Yeah, here's a chance for Atkins to go in front of this leg. Should go down on the 19th to leave a finish. He wants at least five of them. And he doesn't find a trouble. So now it's the time for Barry to put a few troubles in. Yeah, good score here by Van Peer. I think that's the standard which you want to see, especially in the team game. Under 100 after 12 darts. But here comes Atkins with a beautiful 171. He already had a 180 in the first leg. And now his maximum pressure. On Van Peer, he needs to check this 77 because the feeling who Atkins is playing, you don't think he's gonna miss. Van Peer takes his time, he's looking down the board to treble 19. Two darts for double 10. Oh, what a great <laughs> finish for Van Peer! Great finish for Van Peer. And we saw him do that so many times in the men's final, just taking his time on these combination finishes and then just being so clinical he really is a master or on that department of of the game now it's scott mitchell against ryan defade and Marco, you are much more informed about the, the Dutch darts, of course, than, than I am. I remember Ryan from years ago when he used to go to a lot of competitions and then I kind of forgot about him. But then in the last year or so, we have seen him back uh, on various, back in various tournaments. What is the story about Ryan? Well, I'm not really sure. I think he's also busy with work. And he has a family, so sometimes when you have a family and a normal job, you can't go to all the tournaments, of course. Of course, the whole circuit costs a lot of money, so you need sponsors. Of course, Ryan has a few, but he decided to have a little break. And now, he started a couple of years ago. This year, he played the NBA ranking season, and he became number one on that ranking. So that's why he's definitely part of this team. There were six tournaments in Holland. And I believe he won two of them. So, he was deserved number one in that ranking. Yeah, here's a good visit from Mitchell with two travels. There comes the Vrede with a ton. And 
he will be disappointed after that first start. That was perfectly put in the yeah. top part of the travel. There was a lot of room for more. What can Mitchell do? He needs a travel to leave a finish. It's only 60. There's the Vader, perfect first dart. Great follow, here it comes. No, it didn't. It looked like a 180 to me. Well, he's on a finish. Scott. He wants travels. He at least one. This is a chance for the Netherlands. Yeah, maybe one treble is enough in this leg. 45, that was not what he's looking for. One for one. For Mitchell. Sixty-one left, so there are options. Maybe the bull, maybe travel fifteen. Looks like he's going for the bull. Oh, disappointing last dart here for Mitchell. The Raider, 116. Which route will he go? He wants four twenties. No, he doesn't have a dart on a double. So it's Mitchell for fifty-nine. We'll go for the 19th and the first start to leave double top. Oh, that's almost in, in the double. That was nearly a double. Now he's talking to himself. Double top. And that is a very important finish. And you can see the reaction from Scott Mitchell. It says it all. I'm afraid and disappointed that he didn't get the chance. And off goes a world champion, and on comes another. Helle Klaassen against Rhys Colley. So after England got in front 3-1, oh. Barry van Peer made it 3-3 and then Holland had the chance to get in front for the first time in the match but instead it's now 4-3 for England. Yeah, Klaassen was a bit unlucky with a throw, he had a bounce out. Yeah, good score here from Klaassen. And he's not the kind of player Klaassen who shakes with his head or makes any faces if something goes against him. He just gets on with the game. Look at this. Another two trouble visit here from Klaassen. He should be on 87 in this leg, but one dot fell out of the trouble. Yeah, Collier is also on the finish. Klaassen first, one for seven. The snooker shot. Only 58. Yeah. At least 89. What can Collie do with his 170? Yeah, that's not enough. Glassen, 89. For four all. Bullseye. And he just missed. Collie. To go in, to get. Fifth leg, he needs treble 19. No, he's not following. So Glasson will come back for four roll. And after the eight leg, we will see a change of the referee. Double four for Glasson. And it is double four for Glasson. That's what we want to see. First half of the match is done. And it's four roll. We said to the people at home, it was going to be an exciting match. And it is an exciting match. And still not a single leg above 18 darts. That's what we want to see. 
The legs have been won in 16, 14, 17, 16, 16, 14 and 18 darts. Yeah, it's really good. The overall averages from England are now 87 and the Netherlands have nearly a 92. And maybe at home you think, oh, around 90 average is not amazing. But believe me, in a team event, when you play one leg at a time on stage, it's incredible. Okay, here we go. It's Mitchell again. We had two rounds of four. This is round number three. And of course, all players have only played two legs, but still, I think it's worth to mention that Barry Van Peer is averaging almost 102 after his first two legs. And Jamie Atkins from England with the highest average in the match so far of 103.5. But you saw it in the averages, doesn't win legs because you saw it in the leg from Atkins before. He was on 12 darts and a double and he didn't have a shot. Yeah, Vampire was really emotional after his win in the singles, but now he looks ready again for this team event. And of course, why not? He already has two golds in his pocket, but he wants to go home with three. And there must be a major difference between walking up on stage as a World Cup singles champion or a World Cup singles silver medalist. Yes, so exactly. And there's a lot to play for here for England as well, because if they don't win this team event, they become, I believe, fourth in the overall competition. So they definitely need to win to get more medals. It's a ton for Van Peer. He's 100 in front and he has the darts. So are we going to see the Netherlands in front for the first time in this match? Only 60 here for Mitchell. This is not a good lag for Mitchell. 2, 5, 6 after 12. Oh, what is Van Peer doing here? Oh, great last start in between the two. Here comes Mitchell. And he really needs a good visit because this is England's throw after all, so... Great visit here from the England captain. Here we go, Van Peer, 150. Taking his time, as he so often does. Now he has to wait and see. Oh, great last dart here for Van Peer, but now he has to wait and see what Mitchell's going to do with a 116. He was nearly dead and buried in the beginning of the leg. It's with a beautiful 140. He's now on 116. Will he have a dart on the double? He needs to travel. No, he doesn't have a dart. So now it's Van Peer again. Is the Netherlands going up for the in front of the match for the first time? And he's got options here. Could go for the 10s or the 18s. I expect him to go for the 18s. That's double 16 now. Oh, great art here from a beer. Great finish. Yeah, Mitchell, you had six throws. You had 18 darts. You didn't have a dart on a double. And a beer say thank you very much. And it's the Netherlands in front for the first time this match. After being behind at 3-1 for England, it's now 5-4 for Holland. So everything has been turned around. But it could do it again throughout the match. So nothing 
has been decided yet. Now the player with the highest average, I know it's only two legs, but the highest overall average in this team's final so far, Jamie Atkins up against Ryan Defader, who won his first leg in this final against James Hurl, a brilliant 14 dart leg. Oh, we see it again. Klaassen started with a bounce out, a couple of legs. And now the Vrede has one. The good thing is for the Vrede, two dots were in the trouble. We are still yet to see a leg with more than six visits to the board. So both teams are delivering. Great score here from the Raider. Two treble visits. Atkins, he needs to go to 18s now. He does not leave a finish. So six starts here for the Raider for the 183. What a great last start from Atkins, who keeps himself in the leg. Oh, great darts here from the Vader with the two trebles. Yeah, great leg of darts. On 52 after 12 for the Dutchman. Yeah, good last dart here from Atkins. Nothing wrong with the leg from Atkins, but the Vader has a chance to go 6 4 up. Two darts for tops. Ooh, double 10. And he missed. That was so close on that double temp. Atkins. What a shot this will be. What you said, the player with the highest average so far. Goes for the 16 now. We go to the 18. 68 left. For double seven. He has one dodge to make it five all. And he missed. He had his chance. Was a small chance, but he had his chance. Now the Vrede. We didn't see your legs over six visits, so you expect the Vrede to win this. Double ten. And he does it in 16 dots. So the Netherlands is six for up. And the Vrede is happy. And I understand why. Doesn't show a lot of emotions, the Freire, but you shouldn't underestimate the importance of that leg for the Dutchman and for the Dutch team. Now it's James Hurl against Hurley Klaassen. And this really, we are very near to point of no return for this. English team, it will be extremely difficult if James Hull doesn't hold his throw here. But England has the darts. Holland are playing extremely well in this final so far. An overall average of 91. England almost 87. Still very good in in this competition. In this format of play. Yeah, great darts here from Earl. The first dart was below the treble and he finds a gap. Put more two in the treble. Disappointing visit here from Glassen with a dodge in a single four. A very good last start from James Howell and Glassen all the way back on 3 6 4. So even with a 180, he can't leave a finish. 
Normally a Tom. Hurl has the time to get the fifth leg on the board for England. Yeah, great last dart here from Hurl. It's a good leg of darts. 180 after 12. Glasser needs trebles. He needs definitely one to leave a finish. Why not the treble 18 to leave the highest of them all? But first, it's Hurl's turn. 65 left. Oh, should go for 15. She's looking to the scoreboard. Yeah, Klaassen is on the finish. You never know. Is she going for the 15s? Yes, bullseye. It's the bullseye. Klaassen, he found a trouble 18 in the throw before. 170. That's one. And that's not two. So we'll go for the 9 or the 17. It's 17 for double 4. Now double 2. This is extremely important for this English team. And they missed. They played each other in the singles earlier this week, so they have a bit of history. That time, Hurl was the better one. Now it's only played over one leg. Klaassen. He will have one dart at tops. No, that wasn't in. That wasn't in. It was a deflection of the other dart. Hurl on the madhouse. Double one. It's a good marker. Only one dart to go. He's missed. And it's the worst leg of the match. And it's probably the most important. This is going to be 7-4. Klaassen has a chance. Thank you very much, Klaassen. 20 darts, worst leg of the match. But definitely a point for the Netherlands. They go up 7-4. Only two legs to go for the Netherlands to become world champions in a team event. Yeah, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter which player Netherlands sent to the hockey. Here is another one. And what a year he've had. He won the World Masters in 2022. Won a tournament in Belgium. And did really well on the Euro Tour a couple of weeks ago. Where he was. He made it to the semi-finals. It wins over Luke Humphreys and Ross Smith. Here we go. Leg number 12 for Plaisir against Colley. Only 60. Not a good visit. There comes Colley. What a start from the man from England. What a start. Yeah, if you're 7-4 down and you start with a 180, it's not over yet. Yeah, this is not enough for Plaisir. Two visits without a travel. So that's an opportunity missed by Colley. Yeah, definitely. Start with a 180 and then only 13. <laughs> Wesley, Wesley. Three times 60. The problem is he did it with nine darts. That's 12 darts without a big treble for Wesley Plessier. Yeah, it's not a good lag. Good visit here from Colley. That's what you want. Under 100 after 12. And it's in the lag. With the Netherlands started, so it's definitely important for Team England to get a break back. There's still a break behind. Terrible lag here for Plaisir. Not even on a finish. After 15 yards, he checked the score with the referee. It's definitely 86. So 68 now. 
Yeah, you can see the nerves normally, they all know the scores, but now they're, the nerves are kicking in at this time. So it's better to double check the score with the referee. Yeah, it's a bit of a laugh from Wesley, finally does a treble. With dodge 16, he, need, he hit it in treble. Yeah. Frustrating last dart here from Blazier. Double four for Collie. And it is double four for Collie. And it's 7 5. Not too long ago that Hele Klaassen won a very important leg against James Hurl. Now about 30 darts, he's up on the stage again, this time against Jamie Atkins, who started off the match brilliantly with a 16 dart leg, but then lost his next two, so this time it's with the throw. Only 57 here from Atkins. Glasson has one travel. Well, the good news for Klaassen is that he can finish in six starts and Jamie Atkins can't. Can you imagine? Andreas Toft Jansen actually did it earlier in the team's competition this week. Good last start here from Klaassen. Atkins still has the advantage in this leg. That's a terrible first dart. Should go switch to another treble. 18 is the best option, and he finds one. What can Klaassen do? He wants trebles. Oh, that's not the good one, Jelle. He has He's done that so many times, putting the first dart just underneath the treble. Hatkins has six darts for this 170. And there's no trebles here for Atkins. So maybe Klaassen can put a lot of pressure on. Maybe if he finds two travels. Or the bullseye. Great last dart here from the former world champion. Atkins, 112. He needs to go around, find a travel 20. No, he's not finding it. So Klaassen has the time. Getting one leg of the victory. 93 for Klaassen. Travel 19. Yes, two darts for double 18. Double nine. Oh, he missed. He can't believe it. He can't believe it. And also nearly bust his score. Very close to the double 14. Now, Jamie Atkins for double top. Nervous dart. Nervous dart. He missed. Glass and returns to the board. For double nine. Oh. One, double four. No, he missed. This is the worst lag of the game so far. But it doesn't matter. You need to win him. One dart for double ten. And he hits the double ten. 24 darts. It doesn't matter for Team England. They're back in the game. 7-5. Yeah, it's actually 7-6 now, so after being down 7-4, they are now very much back in this final. So the last few legs haven't been as spectacular as in the start, but 
I think that also comes down to the fact that we are reaching the business end yeah, of this final. That's now. what we expected. The first couple of laps in the match will be normal darts. And after that, the nerves will help. Or don't help, <laughs> I should say. No, they're definitely not helping. This is important. This is going to be 7 all, Or if Holland is going to be one leg away from victory. The good thing for the Netherlands is Van Peer has the darts. And I'm very excited to watch how this legs go this leg goes on because both players we have seen in the last few legs they have played have been struggling to find a rhythm. So this could be very tense. Yeah, good start here for Van Peer. A great response by James Hurl, and uh, it looks very deliberate from Hurl. He's walking very slowly back behind Barry Van Peer. Great last dart here for Van Peer. Another turn on the board. Back to Van Peer. Three tons in a row for Van Peer. Nothing wrong with that. Let's wait and see what Hurl is going to do. Yeah, he just keeps adding pressure to James Hurl. And I know there will be opinions about Hurl in this leg. Almost oh, delivered two three. single ones. We started with a one to one and a ton. This is not what Team England wants at the moment. That's a great last start once again by Hurl. Good last start, but he has to wait and see what Van is going to do. He has six darts, but it's two or one. He did ton, ton, ton. Can we see another one? How is that possible that it's only 60? <laughs> How is that possible? Could go down for the 17s here, but looks like he is still opting for the treble yeah. 20. It's a weird choice, I think. He has to go 17s. The treble is blocked. Yeah, now we realize it. Vampire for one four one. Double twelve for one four one. Oh, he just missed. What a finish that will be. Now, nah, Harold, there's only one option to get it to bring it back to seven all. You need to check this one six four. That was close for Van Peer with a 1-4-1. No, Hurl is not going to check this 1-6-4. That would have been a finish very much fitting for a World Cup champion, but he yeah. will get another opportunity this time at double six as he, soon as Hurl has thrown his he's asking, third dart here. Yeah, he's asking the ref. It's 85 left. He's double checking. He's going down. Here comes a vampire for double six. Yeah, it's more pressure and more pressure every leg. Will it be the Netherlands one leg away from victory? <laughs> That's a brilliant dart by Barry Van Peer Great by the World Cup champion. Great dart here for Van Peer. The one leg away from victory. No point return for Team England. They need to win them all. Here comes De Vrede to do the business for Team Netherlands and Colley for Team England to stay in the match. 
So this time it's England with the throw. Reese Colley, who has won two of his first three legs. And exactly the same goes for Ryan Defrader. There we go. Is this going to be the final leg of this year's World Cup? Oh, are we going to see a few more? Colley has the darts. And that's how you want to start. Yeah, great start here for Colley and Team England. Yeah, I'm sorry, Marco. I know you want your <laughs> your countrymen to get over the finishing line at some point, but I very much want this final to go all the way. No, I would love to see a 17th leg. It doesn't mean enough from Holland that I want them to win, but yeah, why not? It would be nice if Holland walks away as world champions. Good response here from the Vrede. We have seen this a few times by Reese Colley starting the leg brilliantly and then having a hard time following it up. That was a very important last start though. The Vrede goes down and he finds a treble. Great dart here from the Vrede. Colley needs trebles and he finds two. Great visit here. What can the Vrede do? Can he put some pressure on? Oh, he has to go for the ball now. That doesn't work. It didn't happen for the Vrede here in this visit. So six darts for a 1-2-4. Of course, we want to see nice finishes. But goes for trouble 16 now. Yeah, for double eight. Oh, what an effort by Reese Colley. Yeah, great effort by Colley. Um, it doesn't matter for him. He will return to the board for double four. The only thing the Verde can do is put some pressure on. He finds the treble with the last dart. Here we go. Double four for Colley. And it is double four for Colley. It's 8-7. It's 8-7. Here we go. This is what we want to see. The first team's final was won by the score 9-7 when the Irish women beat the ladies from Wales. The scoreline could be very similar here if Wesley Placia holds his own pro here against Scott Mitchell. Now look at this. What a, what a lineup for the 16th leg. A former world champion against the reigning world master. The Netherlands has the darts. This is what we want to see. This is what the venue want to see. This is what the people at home want to see. Here we go. It's been said a few times today already, but these final matches really has delivered all the way through. Basically, it's counting how many travels each player will have in the first couple of throws. That's one for Wesley. Such a great last start. I mean, the pressure he's under right now. It's kind of like asking a football player to take the last penalty shot in a, a Champions League final. It's one travel for Mitchell as well. Here we go, Plazier. What a shot from Plazier on this moment in time. With a 180, yeah, the Dutch team is cheering him on. What a moment for a 180. The only thing Mitchell can do is do the same. Here we go. Maybe one more on the left. Oh, this great dart. Great dart for Mitchell. That's experience. That's just world-class by Scott Mitchell. 
Oh, here comes Splice here. Two travels. Two oh. travel 19s. What a leg. What a leg it does. He's on 106 after three visits. Mitchell needs to find at least two travels, you should say. It's a good marker. Oh, oh. it deflects into the travel one. That means Plazier has six stars to become world champion with a team. Only 42. That dart in the treble one. That didn't help. 106 for Plazier. He has been incredible so far in his first nine darts in this leg, Plazier. Yeah. It's a setup shot. The only thing Mitch you can do is put some pressure on and hope. needs to find the treble otherwise you think it's over here we go Plazier for the gold medal 48 he has two darts for double 16 one to go no he hits the bow on the wrong side can you imagine if this <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> that the roof will go off 160 for Mitchell. Two, no. Two missed match starts for Wesley Place here. He will get three more. And Scott Mitchell, obviously not happy with something. Place here <laughs> thought it was him. His turn to throw. Only 60 here for Mitchell. Blazier with three darts in his hand for double 16. Yeah, you do it as a team. And if you has a darts to get over the win it, over the line. Here we go, Blazier. And he does it. Wesley Blazier hits the double 16. And the Netherlands with Wesley Blazier, Benny Van Peer, Jelle Klaassen, and Ryan De Vrede is the World Cup men's team champions. What a final. What, well, I'm, I'm lost for words. What a final we've just seen. This was another brilliant final, as we have said so many times today. The final matches really has delivered. A uh, huge congratulations to Holland. Thank you so much, Marco. I know you Thank you. have to go. Thank you. So thank you once again, Marco, and all the other double UDF members who have been joining me here in the commentary box throughout the last two days. Wesley Placier throws the final dart at the WDF World Cup in Denmark 2023. A big congratulations for the Dutch team who will be crowned champions up on stage in just a few moments time.